Friday, Guam, and welcome to KOM News Extra. I'm Sonia Artero. There remains exactly one month and 15 days left before the October 1st deadline takes effect for the Every Child is Entitled in, is entitled to an Adequate Public Education Act. To ensure the public is well aware of where the Guam public school system stands with adhering to each of the 14 points, we thought it wise to check in with the President of the Guam Federation of Teachers to give us the lowdown on just how the law is shaping up. We are pleased and honored to welcome Matt Rector back to our show tonight. Matt, thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate Certainly. it. Now, where does GPSS stand with meeting all of the 14 points of this act <laughs> or is that a joke well it it, it it sort of is a joke um, you know realistically October 1st is not the deadline for the act to be implemented the act has already been implemented uh, uh, GPSS is supposed to already have complied with all 14 points October 1st is when parents can actually sue through the complicated method that was set up now and in all, all reality you we can take them to court now and one of the ways that we planned all this out, because we actually helped Bob Klitschke craft this bill way back when, a bajillion years ago at this point. And uh, the nice part is, is that the Organic Act says the government of Guam shall provide an adequate education for the children of Guam. And uh, so now that we have a definition of what an adequate education is, we can actually go into federal court, right? and sue the government of Guam that way and get a writ to mandate that they provide an adequate education. So, whereas the, the, the things that he's written into the law really don't have a lot of enforcement. I mean, you have to go through the Government Claims Act, which takes 10 bajillion years and, and really has no teeth in it. But going through federal court will, will allow us to really enforce the law and make sure that our kids have the quality of education they deserve. Just curiously, have you been receiving calls from concerned parents or people throughout the public saying they will in fact sue? No. No. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Well, there's a lot of people that would like to, but most people that, that really have looked at the law know that there's no teeth in it. And it's, uh, but what are you going to sue? You know, if you can't force the government to do it, and local courts have shown again and again that they, they will not take the action necessary to, to force GovGuam to obey the law and to properly finance the things that are supposed to be properly financed. Whereas the federal court, on the other hand, uh, has always stepped up to force the government to do the right thing. So, Would it behoove someone to go through that process, do you think? Uh, yes. Actually, we've had attorneys that have talked to us about taking the case pro bono uh, because it's a great federal case and it will make a world of difference for the children of Guam. Now, part of the requirement of the 14 points is that uh, most of the teachers who need to be certified are, in fact, certified. Is that working out? <clears throat> no. Well, see, once again, that's another misnomer in the system. When, when we talk about a teacher being certified, that's not the same thing as being qualified, right? Because certified, we, we pass these, these laws that allow, allow us to have emergency certified teachers. And yes, everybody in the system currently in a class, not even everybody, we have long-term subs, but, but most of the people in are certified, but they're emergency certified, which means they're not fully qualified. They don't have all the classes necessary to be a, a high-quality teacher, which the No Child Left Behind Act recommends. Now, does Guam mirror their certification with uh, a national entity? Uh, yeah, it's pretty comparable to, to just about everywhere else in the country. I mean, most of them are fairly standard, and we have reciprocity, I think, with 25, 30 states where we can just exchange uh, certification except for like Guam requires the history of Guam for for our teachers to be fully certified uh, most other states have the the same thing history of California history of Maryland etc cetera, etc cetera. let's take for example a teacher with 25 years experience why would that teacher need to be certified or recertified for that matter I'm not quite sure I understand I've heard complaints from teachers mm -hmm. stating that they have to go through this certification process right. or recertification process when in fact the people certifying them uh, <laughs> have way less experience and I was wondering why would someone with yeah. who's such a seasoned teacher with so many years of experience be you know checked if you will by someone with very little experience well that's that's through the evaluation process and um, and, and that that is a big concern and, and the evaluation process we actually started looking at last year last school year and we're looking at revamping it this year yes with, with most experienced teachers you you really don't need to to do a lot of monitoring 
when it comes to it. You just got to make sure they're doing their job, right? Whereas young teachers are the ones that really need the help. And what we found throughout the nation is that the system that works the best is a peer mentoring system where your colleagues are the ones that are actually coming in and helping you be the type of teacher you want to be as opposed to, like you said, somebody with three years experience that has never even passed a chemistry class, much less taught one, coming in and tell me how to teach chemistry. That a little bit difficult to, to have a lot of validity. But by the same token, not only do they have to get evaluated every year to make sure that they're doing their job, but we all have to take classes so that we make sure that we are up to the most current research and we're up in the most current technology. We're constantly honing our skills, just like a doctor has to constantly go back and a nurse constantly has to go back to make sure that we keep up to date on the most recent techniques and technology, I suppose. There you go. That, in fact, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, don't go away as we discuss the issue of substitute teachers and whether or not a drug test or even a police clearance is required. That issue when News Extra returns.